Hello everybody, welcome back to uh, the first video I've done in a century. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. If you've read the title of this video, you know this is going to be a wild ride. So just enjoy me serenading you with um, conspiracy theories and the sound of me eating ice cream because it's hot and I'm tired. So for uh, before I get started, I'd just like to talk about how uh, this drawing is of a character that I love a lot. She is my own and I'm so happy I finished this. It's been so long since I've drawn something and I didn't want to go MIA for um, July again. But with that being said, let's, uh, let's get into this video while you watch me draw. Things the government wants you to believe. So I'm going to start off this video with like a little bit of facts about Area 51 and like, you know, what Area 51 actually is, or at least what the government says Area 51 actually is. So, Area 51 is actually located in Arm, Arm, Amargosa, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce that right, Amargosa Valley in Nevada. Um, it's in a very remote location, which I think was actually the point of it because they intended it for a training ground. Um, and some people actually believe that the moon landing was shot here, apparently. I did not know that. I always assumed that it had just its own little Hollywood studio for the moon landing. Um, not to say that I believe that the moon landing was faked. I really would like to believe that it's real. But anyways, aside from that, um, it actually, I did read somewhere that it was started as a testing ground. They wanted a remote location so that they could test weapons and that they could have, um, you know, like army people and train them and stuff. And so it'd be really helpful if it was in a remote location, just like most military bases are, which... By the way, if this place is supposed to be super remote and super, like, hard to find, why does everybody know about it? <laughs> Who found it? Like, I, anytime I ever see anything about a military base, it's always super secretive. Nobody knows where these military bases are at because you're not supposed to. They got weapons and stuff there. What if people try to terrorize it, you know? Like, what, what the fuck? Why, why do we know so much about Area 51? But anyways, I digress. Um, the actual myths about Area, Area 51, I can't talk, I'm eating ice cream. The actual myths around Area 51 came about when military tests were mistaken for UFOs. So, like, people around the area, they'd see flying objects and they'd be like, holy shit, flying high. And the military would be like, no, not flying high, flying normal. Um, and so, basically, people started to, like, form, um you know stories around it they were like this shit is alien bro it can't we can't do that and apparently the military says we can and that they just don't tell us that they can but what a nice cover-up you know hide a lie with another lie but anyways um the reason that the that the myths gained so much ground recently is because of the bob lazar uh documentary and if you haven't seen that yet i would encourage you to watch it and then tell me what it's about because i haven't seen it but i hear it's really good um and that he talks about how he used to work on the UFOs while he was there, which is really interesting because he would always talk about how they were threatening his family, which I think is crazy that he's still talking. Um, I don't know if that's bravery or suicidal. I can't really tell. And also, Area 51 is not very hard to approach, which is also crazy to me because if it's supposed to be a military base, I didn't think you could get within five feet of it, but apparently you can. You can go up to its front gates and back gates and just be like, hey and the military will be like hey as they pull out a gun but the point is that you can get there and it's pretty easy and that's that's kind of nice the myths behind area 51 so basically the the standard myths behind area 51 are that alien spacecrafts are being built and tested there um that's what bob lazar was talking about uh he said that he worked on him so that's what people presume was happening there um they also say that the aliens that we, or the, the spacecrafts that we get, we take the aliens out of it, we test it, you know, we fucking probe them like we say that the aliens do to us. Kind of crazy, comes full circle. And we think that the government is hiding this from us for profit, because think about it. Um, if you have all this access to all this information and you're not giving it away, you're letting people suffer at a price. For example, the whole uh cancer conspiracy theory that we actually have the cure for cancer but we don't release it because cancer is a billion dollar industry just like how we don't release technology because tech um people building the technology and stuff is a billion dollar industry i don't really know what the fuck i just said but i feel like it has a point so i'm just gonna say it 
so those are those are the basic conspiracy theories behind it and there are some whether you believe in aliens or not um like they there are possibilities of aliens being in the universe and i think it's crazy that anybody would believe that aliens don't exist at least to some scale if you watch this uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson episode of the Cosmos, well, an episode of the Cosmos. If you watch an episode of the Cosmos, I believe it's called Ghosts in the Sky. Hold on, I just bought it. Let me check on it. Oh, it's called The Immortals. And he talks about how uh, possibly on Saturn, no, I think it was, I think it was Jupiter on one of Jupiter's moons, and I think it was Europa, that there is possible evidence of bacteria um, residing on there. And while that's not exactly the big head alien, big eye aliens that we believe exist, it's still foreign life on a foreign planet. And if that has the possibility to exist, then it could evolve just like we did into the bigger, more smarter organisms that we are. Even if it's not at our level quite yet, it's still considered an alien. So, for anybody to believe that aliens don't exist somewhere in this gigantic fucking universe is kind of wild to me. It's just, it, the possibilities are endless, you know? We could fe- fucking see, like, a uh, three-eyed, three-footed, three-tittied alien somewhere and be like, Oh, wow, that's an alien. And it's, like, not advances us. It's just, like, an alien creature, you know? And, it, and, it, and that is possible in our universe. And maybe it does exist and we just don't know because it's so goddamn far away. There is also uh, possible water underground on Mars, which I think is really interesting because water, as we know, is the basis for life. And maybe that doesn't apply to all species, but, you know, it's kind of possible that we could have it. Or or at least it was a a civilization a long time ago. And this is not scientific. I'm completely talking out of my ass, except for the part that um, Mars might have had water underground. But either way, it's still pretty fucking interesting. Actual sightings of aliens. Some of the most interesting sightings that I've heard of so far, um, that I've seen. First of all, I used to think that The Fourth Kind was a really good movie because I thought it was a real story. I looked it up. Apparently it's not. For the sake of doing this video, I did some research on it because I wanted to talk about it. And turns out it's more of a cinematic thing, which I'm kind of sad about. Oh shit, my ice cream's melting. Anyways, so I compiled the ones that I know of to be generally true. And... The first one, sorry, I'm eating ice cream. Anyways, the the first one that I found that was super interesting, I actually went to go see a movie with it with my boyfriend a few, um, maybe a year or two back, is the Phoenix Light sighting that came about in 1997. Thousands were actually here to witness this, and of course the military, uh, military tried to play it off as, you know, just like military testing and stuff. And that, I mean, it would, but it was just so foreign, you know? It was huge, it flew kind of quickly, and it was triangular um, or boxy in shape. So, like, um, the way that it described it in the article I read was that it was a carpenter square. And if you don't know what a carpenter square is, it's basically like a ruler. So it is triangular, but a little more, a little more squarish in shape. And there were five circular lights, which some people suspected were either the generators or the, um, the uh, engines, sort of. And the sighting actually didn't just happen in uh, Phoenix. It happened all the way back in Henderson, Nevada, Prescott Valley, Arizona, Dewey, Arizona, and also in a Mexican uh, state or town called Sonora. I'm pretty sure that is a state, and I'm just fucking stupid. But anyways, yeah, so that, it actually went a lot farther than I thought it was. Although the ones that were in like Henderson and Prescott and Sonora, those were smaller sightings um so they didn't get it get as much reported but the phoenix light sighting was actually there were thousands so that made it a lot more significant that so many people saw it and so many so many uh videos were recorded that were sort of undeniable the next one is the travis walton incident this actually got adapted into a movie called fire in the sky This one, I didn't believe so much because it happened in, you know, kind of a small rural town. For some reason, alien sightings always seem to happen here. I'm not sure why that is. But anyways, um, and the the basic story is that this man was traveling with his co-workers. I guess they were lumberjacks and they were in a forest and they saw this big flying saucer. And one of the guys, Travis Walton specifically, went towards the light and it basically knocked him out and he was taken by it. 
and all of the other co-workers went to went back to the town and were telling everybody what happened and obviously people were skeptical they were like what the fuck aliens don't exist stop fucking lying to us and they took polygraph tests they took lie detector tests and all of them passed except one which ended up being deemed inconclusive anyways so it didn't really matter and i also saw that the lie detector tests were taken again later on just to test their validity and every single person passed it is worth noting that the person who did not pass was sort of a hardcore skeptic um and the guy was also returned five days later so they definitely didn't murder him they didn't hide his body or anything because he came back five days later and reported his story about what happened with the aliens and it was sort of traumatic for him as far as i've read but um yeah so that's basically what happened and if you guys have any other alien stories that you think are interesting let me know down in the description below remember to storm area 51 on your local september 20th and thank you guys for watching love you guys bye Mwah.